That's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thank you for joining us and staying with us as well. Uh, we're heading straight to the next conversation and uh, the possibility of having the APC having a Muslim Muslim ticket. Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst, uh, joins us this morning. Nick Agule, it's good to have you join us. Oh, well, we also thank you very much for having me and good morning to our viewers. All right, thank you so much, Nika Gule. Uh, we also have in the studio Adeyemi Saka. Thank you for staying with us as well. Yeah, I'm moving away. <laughs> so, so we'll just get straight to it uh, if you can hear us. There are a lot of concerns. There's a possibility of the APC that has not been confirmed, and so uh, of the APC having a Muslim Muslim ticket. Now, you have, on the other hand, uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria and the Catholic Society of Nigeria warning political parties against. I mean, having a Muslim Muslim ticket in 2023 presidential elections. Now, what, what would happen if, you know, political parties decide to toe this line, Muslim Muslim tickets or maybe Christian Christian tickets? What will be the implication? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. I think this discussion is taking national prominence because the two major parties have a northerner and a southerner and both Muslims on their presidential tickets. This is what is causing this uh, uh, topic to gain national prominence. And it, the, 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 the bottom line here is that people feel that with Atiku Abubakar being the PDP presidential candidate, a northerner and a Muslim, and Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a southerner and a Muslim, the APC is disadvantaged. I am not saying so. That's what people feel, that the APC is disadvantaged if they field a northern Christian. To their thinking, they believe that the northerners will not vote for that northern Christian. They will rather vote for Atiku Abubakar, who is a northern Muslim. And this is the reason why it looks like the APC are being made to consider a northern Muslim to checkmate or balance the, the voting uh, dynamics of the north. But the people who are making these postulations are wrong on various counts. Firstly, they assume that the whole of northern Nigeria are Muslims. But that is not the case. Northern Nigeria is split between Muslims and Christians almost on a 50-50% basis. I mean, at the risk of contradiction, if I look at states like Benue, Kogi, you know, uh, Plato that are also classified as one of the 19 northern states that are almost 100% Christian. I can say, like I said at the risk of contradiction, that there are more Christians in the north, even than Muslims. So those who are making these postulations either are ignorant of the population uh, statistics of the north, or they are just trying to uh, be mischievous. Because okay. let me say one thing up front. Like I did say on this program some time back, a Muslim Muslim ticket had worked in Nigeria before. In, uh, in President Buhari's time as a military head of state, he was from, I mean, he is from a Katrina state, a Muslim, and he picked uh, Tunde Diagbon from Kwara, which is also not, and also a Muslim as his vice. So during that time, we had the two leaders of Nigeria were both Muslims and Northerners, nothing happened. Fast forward to 1993, we also had a Muslim Muslim ticket between Abiola and King Gibe, even though there was a North South. A representation on that. Again, Nigeria didn't have a problem with that. But in 2023, it's a different dynamic because the past seven years, Nigerians have never been polarized. 
along religious and ethnic divides like in the last seven years. The government of President Buhari has brought this division to the fore, has made Nigerians to become conscious of who is a Muslim, who is a Christian, who is a Northerner, who is a Southerner, who is a Fulani, who is not a Fulani. So a ticket that has a Muslim Muslim uh, a, a candidate on it in Nigeria is not going to fly. Let everybody be aware of that. It's not going to fly because at the point where we are now, there is a lot of mistrust within the polity. And there is no way Nigerians are going to back that kind of ticket. I can assure you that if, if, if the APC fields a Muslim Muslim ticket, they are going to lose majority of the votes in the South, and they are going to lose a significant number of votes in the North. Like I am from Benue State, I am classified as a Northerner, I will never put my vote for such a ticket. And I know millions of people will not put their vote for such a ticket. So that is the situation where we are in now. Mm. All right, uh, your, your, uh, Nika Gule, your statistical, um, I mean, uh, uh, analysis there, uh, stands uh, to be to be tested. Um, I do not know if you said majority of uh, the populace Nigerians in the northern Nigeria Christians. Uh, I, I I do not know how that can be true when, uh, as according to the World Bank, uh, in as recently as 2018, Nigeria was 53.5 percent Christian, a uh, Muslim rather, and 45.9 percent Christian. That's 53.5 percent Muslim and. Uh, 45.9% Christian. I mean, even if you come to Lagos State, you look at the indigenous of Lagos State, it could be said that um, it's a slight majority in favor of the uh, of Muslims. Um, so, so are we sure that we have more Christians in northern Nigeria than Muslims? That, that, that is doubt. That is um, something we need to check going by what the World Bank is saying on the balance in the entire country. Um, but are you sure? You, you need to look at... Uh you need to look at the, 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 the demographics of the northern states. There are states in the north, even Borono, that has a significant amount of Christians, number of Christians. When he says same significant, Yowe, what is the percentage? What's the percentage? We, we know when he says significant, is it 50, 50, 60, 40, 30, 70? What's the percentage? The, the, so so, so the, the percentage of Christians in what is classified as the core Muslim states will be close to 30-40%. But then when you now come to some states in the north, or which are classified as north, like Adamawa, like Taraba, like Benue, Benue is almost 100% uh, uh, Christians, like Kogi, you know, then of course you, you look at states like uh, Niger, you look at all of these states, there are a significant amount of Christians at the 40, 50 percent uh, basis. So even if you have more Muslims in the north, that percentage is not dominant. It's not going to be anything like 60 to 40 or 70 to 30. It's okay. going to be more to something like 55 to 45, if not 50, 50. So but what I'm saying is that you, you only need to win 25 percent of the vote in every state and then have the overall uh, uh, advantage nationwide to win a presidential election. And in every state of the North, there are more than 25% of the population that are Christians. So these are the dynamics. Uh, but according to the World Bank, according to the World Bank, majority of Christians are found in the Southeast and South-South, Southwest uh, and Middle Belt. Um, but you have majority of the Nigerian Muslim population are found in in the northern part of the country and f as far back as 2018 we're told that just under half of those in the northern part of um uh, of these states um uh, we talk about uh, the middle belt are, are christians but in northern urban centers in northern urban centers however we're told about 95 percent of the population is muslim i'm just going to read something all right i started from uh, um, that's, from, that's, from an online source. I, please permit me to go through this. It says the majority of Christians are now found in the Southeast, South-South, Southwest, and Middle Belt region. That's most of the Christians. It didn't say 
you have majority of people in the Middle Belt as Christians, but the majority of Christians in Nigeria are found in the Southeast, South South, Southwest, and Middle Belt region. It is estimated that around half the Nigerian population today are Muslim. This is about 53 point something percent, all right, over 53 percent. While just under half, just under half, that's about 49, uh, 40, um, uh, uh, 47 point something percent are Christian. Now, in northern urban centers, however, 95% of the population is Muslim. You're talking about the urban centers. So if you're going to Borno, you're talking about Medugri. If you're going to uh, um, Kano State, you're talking about the Kano metropolis and adjoining areas. 95% of those in these urban centers where you have the most population are, 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 are Muslims. Nick? Well, well I, I think the World Bank statistics lacks empirical evidence. And we can debate this demographics uh, because the Nigerian uh, government has not even conducted a census uh, for the past how many years? Probably getting to 20 years. I think the last census that was conducted in Nigeria was in 2006. I remember that census. I was in my house. I was not even counted. So for 16 years, the Nigerian government does not even have an idea of how many people we are in Nigeria or the, the demographics in terms of the gender balance or the youth population vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the age population and all of that. We don't have that. Neither do we have any stat statistics, organized statistics about Christians and Muslims. But the, 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 the statistics that says Nigeria has more Muslims than Christians is very debatable. It's very debatable, but it's not something that we are going to crack here. The point we're making here is that if the APC attempts a Muslim Muslim ticket, they have they have they will put themselves in a huge disadvantage position. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are so many, so many Christians not south of Nigeria that will not put their votes for a Muslim Muslim ticket in the Nigeria of today. In the Nigeria that has been so polarized in the last seven years along religious and ethnic divides. So the, the advice I will give to the APC is, the APC should look for a competent Northern Christian as vice presidential candidate. Once they do that, First and foremost, let us assume that the Southwest is Nick, going Nick to Nick Agule, we, we, we need to get back to Adeyemi Saka, who's in the studio here with us this morning. Okay. Um, let's get quickly to it now. Um, I know that you have a lot to react to what mm -hmm. he has said, but just before then, he's made reference of the, you know, Abiola and King Bay ticket, which was a Muslim Muslim ticket. And it feels like that's also uh, been on top of the front bone and people are asking. Why so I, I, if we had that time in 1993, I mean, it felt like Nigerians, or it is, Nigerians accepted, you know, that ticket, embraced it wholeheartedly. Uh, what's different now? Why, why are we... Why, why if that was the reason they didn't even get into office? We can never say. Why if that was the reason that the election was annulled? Maybe they put into consideration the unity of the country. Is it 1983... We had the Shagari and Nekweme. In um, when Obasanjo was there, Obasanjo a Christian. He went for a yardra. Do we want to observe um, Bari Diagbo? Maybe that was why the government was disconnected from the society, reality on the ground. And in, the, in that was a dictatorship. There was no opposition. It wasn't a democracy. And every time we had a democracy, we've tried to balance things along tribal and religious lines. And when people say APC's problem is because of Atiku emergence as PDP, PDP no. The APC's edict is conquest in Kano. Whether we like it or not, that's the person that's giving them edict. And you know, when Madlam Nasir Erwaf at some point said, um, and, and General Rabiu, Musa Kwankwasu would divide the votes of PDP in, in, in the North, I was laughing. Are Northerners, is it not going to pull the, are Northerners that are going to vote for him, no, no, we're not supposed to vote for APC? But, but I mean, it does, is it not there for, does it not there for follow, uh, uh, David, that if, if APC's headache in the North, especially in the Northwest, is Kwan Kwa Su, yeah. who is a Muslim, yeah. should they not get somebody from either Northeast or Northwest, who is also Muslim, 
to eat into his votes. But now, the Quran Council will divide the votes of Muslims. But why don't you go for the votes of Christians in the north that will feel protected with you and vote for you? Why are you making me give APC free expo like this? So, but, but what exactly? That's interesting. So, so, but we constantly are in this conversation of mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, uh, religion has never been, I mean, let's not be divided those, towards, let's those, not, you know, I mean, we constantly say. Why are those delusions that religion is not? No, religion? we're just saying that let's not be divided. Let's not go towards religious or ethnic differences. I mean, the, because that's the message we've been preaching. We've been preaching competence. We've been preaching unity. It doesn't really matter whoever, wherever, you know, anybody comes from. From, as long as yeah. you know is a person that we can accept wholeheartedly, why are we different no. now? Why, why does it seem like you know nobody really is concerned about national unity? Shouldn't really matter. Should it matter where anybody comes no, from? No, we should have gone beyond this. And the greatest disservice the political elites did to Nigerians, especially those from Southwest, was to kick against the draft of the 1995 Constitution. That draft guaranteed about in in a 30 year cycle cycle. In the 30-year cycle, the sixth geopolitical zone would have had a shot at the presidency. And the constitution says, after this 30-year after cycle, we can now decide either to jettison the arrangement or move forward. If somebody from Southeast has become the president, if somebody from North Central has become the president, if somebody from Northeast, Northwest, everybody will have a say. And everybody will believe and will see themselves as equal stakeholder in this entity called Nigeria. But some people just decided that, no, we should not. And that's why we are here. It's a single year, five term, then proposal in the draft. And it says, in case of what happened with President, with little President Mao, yeah, that happened, it's somebody from that region, and an elected vice president from that region, will complete his time, and it then goes to the next zone. So I think, and we should look at this. We shouldn't lie to ourselves that religion and ethnicity is not playing a key role in our politics. It is. So to make this thing, to resolve this issue, why don't we just put it there in black and white in our constitution? All right. All right. We, 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 have to, we have to go. Very interesting. I think that expo you, you gave is, um, is, is quite... I am, and I'm we, pained. We, 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 we will send an invoice <laughs> to the party. But it's quite a very interesting one. Um, Nick Aguli has been a guest joining us via Zoom. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, let me leave uh, here with a message to Nigerians that all these jostling that are happening now, all the shenanigans, this is the politician's time. Nigeria's time is going to come next year in February, in March, where we are going to make our voices heard. All and right. we can only do that with a voter's card. Thank so you. So let everybody get their voter's card ready and the battle will happen in 2023. Thank you very much. And of course, Ademi Saka, who's graciously given us his time over two topics. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, but well, Muslim Muslim right. tickets will not fly. <laughs> uh, this sure shouldn't if, be a I'm battle. Sure if, if well, we, why are we talking about, I mean, Nika Gule is talking yeah, about yeah. having to battle. She, yes, she indeed. Like... <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the size of a package. Um, we'll return tomorrow right here with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Um, don't forget, you can always follow us on social media, Plus TV Africa, and of course on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic day.